Got ourselves a space opera at number seven, boy. <laughs> this is a, 1983 was a probably not one of the best years ever, but uh, still a star-studded year as far as One Hit Wonders is concerned. Had uh, 99 Love Balloons by Nina. I'm sure a lot of people remember that one. Put it on the wrist by Taco. That 1926-1925 sounding record, summer of '83, and there was the Commissar by After the Fire. I guess some people would consider She Blinded Me with Science by Thomas Dolby as a one-hit wonder, although he did have a couple of other uh, Hot 100 entries. But here's another classic Hot, well, well, the classic Hot 100 entry, a one-hit wonder, Peter Schilling with Major Tom. Fancy played this November 20th, 1983. There's a lot of interpretations of this record now. Some people think that this record was uh, a sequel to David Bowie's Space Oddity. But, saw, saw a place, uh, one of the, uh, I got a book called One Hit Wonders. It's an old book. I bought it back in the 90s, and, and I'm not sure if all the details in that book are accurate now. But uh, there was a part in the book where uh, Peter Schilling had done a interview with Melody Maker. And he said that... Uh, Major Tom was not a was not about the David Bowie record at all, but it was based on a movie that he saw, a movie that came out in 1968 that he saw called Dance, you know, called Danger on the Moon, starring Gregory Peck, which came out in 1968. There's one thing though, can't find can't find any information about that movie. Nothing. Looked all over the place on the internet for Danger on the Moon. And now Gregory Peck, he was in a movie called The Stalking Moon, but that was a western that came out in 1968, but couldn't find Danger on the Moon. So, but anyway, uh, pulled from that source and from another source, pulled a very slight uh, biography of, of Peter Schilling from Germany. He grew up listening to the Rolling Stones and the Beatles, took up the folk guitar, and uh, apparently he had two big passions. There was sports and there was music, or more specifically soccer or football and it, but he chose music but he served in the army for a while he worked in the music publishing industry and worked for a record label called WEA and cut some sides came out with the album Error in the System I love that <laughs> Man, I tell you I love these space opera records Space Oddity by David Bowie which came out in England in 1969 in England in 1969, and for quite a while, David Bowie was actually considered a one-hit wonder in England. 1969, 1970, of course, he came out with, I believe it was Change in 1971, one of his signatures. And uh, by the spring of 1973, he had gained enough traction here in the States to where uh, Space Oddity, Oddity was re-released and became one of his signature hits here in the States in uh, 1973. And there was Space Man by Harry Nielsen back in 1972. I just want to be a space man. That's all I wanted to be. But now that I'm a space man, nobody cares about me. This space thing sort of a, could be a meta metaphor of fame and fortune and the ostracism it caused between the star, between the rock star and planet Earth, or it may be a spiritual thing. Lots of interpretations. Lots of interpretations on this record, too. Some people think that uh, maybe Major Tom just lost his mind and cut off communications with Earth and just wanted to strip off in space. Merge with the stars. Dissolve into the continuum of space-time. Become something bigger than himself. Bigger, much, much more bigger than the ego. And so you got that spiritual interpretation. Let me read you a few of these lyrics. This is just—it's a brilliant record. Uh, let me back at ground control. There is a problem. Go to rockets full. Oh, let me do my quote unquote thing. Not responding. Hello, Major Tom. Are you receiving? Turn the thrusters on. And this is when he cuts off from Earth. We're standing by. There's no reply. I'm not coming back to Earth. Earth below us, drifting. Falling. Oh, it's four, three, two, one. Earth below us, drifting, falling, floating, weightless, calling, calling home across the stratosphere. A final message: Give my wife, my love, then nothing more. That's it. I'm done. Done with Earth. Far beneath the ship, the world is mourning. They don't realize. He's alive. And this is a part where people think that he faked 
his death. Major Tom faked his death, people thinking that a spaceship, when it re-entered Earth's atmosphere, it burned up, but that wasn't the case. They don't realize he's alive. No one understands, but Major Tom sees. Now the light commands. It's almost like a spiritual light that's calling. Spiritual light that's calling. Now the light commands. This is my home. I'm coming home. Almost kind of reminds me a little bit of getting closer. Get, I'm getting closer to my home by Grand Funk Railroad way back in 1970. And earth below us drifting, falling, floating weightless, coming, coming, home, home. Well, that's there's a lot of interpretations. I'm sure you probably got your interpretations, which probably just as good as mine, maybe even better than mine. But anyway, on I'm starting to get a little get a little too excited. Let's get back to this record. Uh, well, as far as the chart position goes, now here's the interesting thing about the chart position of this song. Did well, of course, in Germany. Uh, Peter Schilling's home country went to number one in Germany, Austria, Switzerland. Did well in Canada. Went to number one in Canada. Number 14 here in the States. Boy, the FM stations, they were plastering this record all over the, well, all over the FM airways. Heating up the fall of 1983. But, in England, you're not going to believe this. It only got as high as 42 in England. You'd think a song like this would have gone to number one in England for three or four weeks. Maybe it wasn't promoted enough in Britain. I don't know. But on my fancy playlist, though, it's kicking. It's kicking up into the stratosphere. <laughs> yes. Peter Schilling, Major Tom, at number seven on my fancy playlist, November 20th, 1983.